friends, welcome to Business Edition. In this program, we look to see how various stakeholders are using technology to develop the small and medium enterprises sector in the country. My name is Yvonne I'm Sembembo saying welcome to Business Edition. So with me to discuss more about what stakeholders are doing to develop the SME sector in the country, I have with me Scott Bennett, who's the Deputy Chief of Party uh, of Engine. When we talk about Engine, program which is just uh, recently launched in Tanzania. Yeah. What is this all about? The program is comprised of three separate components. The first one is focusing on improving the enabling environment for private sector development and that, um, that focuses on uh, facilitating a series of public-private dialogues between private sector associations and, um, and, and, and local government authorities to, to really try and identify areas that, um, that implementation of policies might be reformed in a way that can benefit both, both sides in, in, a, in a more uh, conducive environment for business. The second component of the program is working to build up the capacity of what we call business development service providers. These are uh, consultants and business advisors uh, that, that provide services to small business owners to help them improve their operations across a whole range of different um, sectors and services. And the third component of our program is working to improve access to finance for small businesses, particularly women-owned businesses, youth-owned businesses, businesses working in the agricultural uh, value chain. Um, and we provide technical support to financial institutions and, um, and we also are trying to facilitate linkages between small businesses and financial institutions. And when you looked at the area of uh, policies and of course the private sector development as well, what was it that you saw was lacking that you thought that, okay, I think we can come in here and support in this area? One of the challenges has been getting to the implementation stage. So one of the objectives of our program is to really try and um, move beyond research, move beyond dialogue, and, and try and get um, get to a point where, where, where policies can be, can be changed in a way that both benefits the government and, and the private sector. Um, and the where in the area that we focus on specifically under our program is at the local governance level. So it's a very, it's a different approach than what's been taken previously working kind of at a national level. So we, we focused with LGAs and regional governments um, to, to really try and facilitate, facilitate dialogue uh, between those parties. The, the BizFundi site, which uh, we are launching today, is, is one of our, um, I think, one of our key successes so far. Um, and this represents a, a, a year's worth of effort on our part to de design and develop and, and test uh, a, a system that can really help to facilitate linkages between small business owners and business development service providers and ultimately with financial institutions. So um, uh, one of the things that we're, that, we're, that we're in the process of doing right now is developing a credit readiness service that we can offer to small business owners. So we're training uh, a small cohort of business development service providers to be able to work with a small business owner uh, to help them develop their financial statements, develop their business plans, identify collateral, uh, really work on cash flow projections and really understand um, how much credit they can, they can realistically assume for their business so that when they approach a financial institution, they're ready. They have all their documents together and they've had those conversations before. They've, they've asked themselves those tough questions and when they're ready to sit face to face with a, with a banker, um, they can they can make a strong case for their business. What is different about this that you think that uh, um, you know um, other platforms haven't been able to offer yet? It's a very user friendly uh, platform that allows businesses to find business advisors uh, in a, in, a, in a very easy way across a whole range of different services. Um, We've integrated a rating functionality so that uh, after a business has used the services of a business advisor, they can go back and, and, and rate their services. So that adds an extra element of incentive uh, on behalf of the business advisor to make sure that they're doing a really good job, that they're, um, that they're pleasing their client and that they're really um, 
that they're making sure that they're producing high quality work for, for their clients. Um, what that will do is in future when, when more, uh, when, when other users come to the site and they do searches, they'll be able to sort and filter by those ratings. So, um, so business advisors that do a really good job will be rewarded by additional business. They'll be the first ones that come up in the search. So um, that's something that I think is, 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 is really quite innovative um, and, and really has potential to, um, to really help make connections between, between those two parties. Uh, when it comes to technology, use of technology, um, the trend, what does it show? Are we seeing these entrepreneurs become um, accustomed to use of technology or do you think we still have a long way to go there? That's one of the things that, um, that we're really optimistic about is um, not only the, the high penetration of mobile phone usage, but the increasingly growing amount of smartphone usage within Tanzania. So um, I, many people think of smartphones as, as very expensive Samsung, Apple telephones, but uh, the fact is um, you can access an Android smartphone for as little as $35. That's one of the things that we're most optimistic about is not only the large um, portion of mobile phone ownership here in Tanzania, but the, the large and growing proportion of smartphone ownership. And generally when we think of smartphones, we think of expensive uh, phones like a Samsung or, or an Apple phone. But um, the fact is um, you can access uh, an Android-based smartphone for as little as $35. Um, and those prices will continue to go down and, um, and ownership proportion will continue to expand over time. So, we're, we're starting here, but we're also, we have an eye toward the future in, in, the, in the work that we're doing. We look at um, the use of this platform. Um, one would get the idea that maybe it's those in the urban areas that are most likely to use this kind of service. Uh, but what is happening down there in the rural areas? We, we want as many people as possible to, to be aware of it, and, uh, and we're engaging with media, and we're, we're traveling throughout uh, the, the country. To, to really help raise awareness of, of this platform. Uh, there's a network effect, just like anything. The more people who use it, the more valuable it becomes. Uh, if only two people in the world have a telephone, then it's, it, the, the value is, is, is significantly limited. But as more and more people have, or start using the platform, um, the potential and, and, and the value of the platform is really going to expand. So we want as many people to, to use it as possible. We want as many people to be aware of it as possible. Um, and it's, it's also, it's a work in progress. So it is what it is today, but we have plans to continue to build it out, to continue to responding to feedback that we receive, adding new features, and, and making it more user-friendly over time. With those who have already subscribed, the kind of questions that they're asking, uh, the kind of challenges that they're facing as well, uh, what are the common ones? The important thing to know is, is really how, how it works and, um, and, and, and that's one of the things that we're, we're continuing to work on. We're developing a series of small uh, instructional videos to, to help people understand how to navigate through all of the different features on the site. Those, that'll be going up uh, within the next couple of weeks. Um, and we're developing other, other aspects of the site to, to really give people a reason to continue to come back. So there's a, there's a news feed that's automatically updated every, every day. So, um, I mean, I go on, that's where I get my business news, as, is on that news feed, which is right there on the homepage. We have, um, we have financial access data that we've already integrated onto the site. So um, based on your location, you can identify very easily all of the commercial banks, MFIs, SACOs, and ATMs throughout the country and see which ones are uh, located within your proximity. Um, and we're identifying other ways to, to, to add information to the site as well. So economic data, market data, financial data, things like that, that we can find, that we can update automatically, uh, just so business owners have more information uh, at their fingertips. We're looking at the, um, the business developer providers themselves. Um, how, how does one you know, come on board? What do they need to have to be able to do this? These are professional business advisors that we work with. And, and the engine program, and my colleague Goodluck, has gone through a process of identifying over 100 business development service providers. And then we've gone through a vetting process. Um, and we are, at the moment, we're only working with 80 of them. So we've, we've been a bit selective with the ones that we work with. Um, 
but we know who these people are, and we, we, we're, we're working with them closely, and, um, and, and we, we can vouch safe for them. Um, that's not to say that other business advisors can't register with the program, but before their profile gets shared on the platform, uh, they need to be vetted by the engine program so that we can have a, a level of confidence in knowing that they are who they say they are. So this year is a, is a four-year program. Mm -hmm. What happens at the end of the four years? The platform will be handed off to a local organization. Uh, we're still in the process of, of doing the identification, but um, most, of the, most of the development will have been done by then, and, um, and um, it, it'll just be a matter of maintenance. There are ways that um, that if we can if we can really generate a lot of uh, usage of the platform there there are ways to monetize it that will generate enough revenue to keep it sustaining so um we have a lot of confidence that um if we can if we can share this this service with as many people as possible that by the end of the engine program it'll be it'll be a really robust service that um, will be able to self-sustain itself Okay, very optimistic there, but uh, I'm sure there must be challenges that you've come across. What are the biggest challenges that uh, you came across when coming up with this platform? One of the challenges is, is, um, is introducing it to, to people um, and, and really having to explain it in, in some cases. Um, it's not for everybody. Not everybody gets it right away, but, um, but that's okay. I mean, we have other ways of sharing information with, with small business owners besides a digital platform. But one of the things that we have found uh, through our focus groups is that, um, not necessarily too surprising, that youth are really, uh, are really drawn to a, a, a service like this. They get it uh, uh, instinctively. And so one of the mandates of our program is to really help um, support small, bu small business owners who are young, young people. Um, and, and, and what we've found through our focus groups is that, that this is a service that, that young people especially uh, are really attracted to. Oh, so you think that uh, this is one of the ways that uh, we'll be able to address the issue of um, youth unemployment because, as you said, you know, youth are the ones who really ca catch on to it much, much, much quicker. Yeah. Uh, what about the women entrepreneurs themselves? Because we have a lot of women entrepreneurs, right. but when it comes to use, use of technology, how are they? going to be doing a whole a number of different outreach events um, and, and we cater our message to our audience um, so that uh, it, you know it's okay if, if we're working with a group of people that need a bit more time to understand how the technology works and how to access it um, we're able to do that and and we're developing um, supplemental materials that we that will that will um, that will kind of complement the service we're developing videos. We have um, we have flyers and brochures. So there's other ways of, of getting that information out there to people, um, to to really in, in different ways, so that um, that that they can be receptive to the message. How do you assess the development trend so far? Is it positive? Do you think are they becoming much more uh, innovative in the ways of doing business, or do you think many entrepreneurs in the country still face uh, challenges when it comes to starting a business and actually growing the uh, their businesses? There are a number of challenges. There, there have been a number of challenges. There continue to be a number of challenges. Um, and and I, don't, um, I don't purport to, to say that this is going to be a panacea for, for small business owners. It's, it's a difficult environment to be a small business owner. Um, but this is, this is one way that um, a small business owner can, can, can get access to some additional resources that can help them. So. Uh, the business advisors that are on the platform uh, are able to, to provide services to a small business owner to help them with weak, weak spots in their business. So maybe somebody is very good at sales and marketing, but they're not so good at bookkeeping or, or tax preparation. That's okay. I mean, everybody's human. Not everybody is great at everything. So um, now there's a way to be able to easily identify who those people are that have that expertise and engage with them in a way that can really help make an impact on your bottom line. Um, the credit readiness service, which we hope to roll out um, within the next month, uh, will be another way to help small businesses to, to increase their likelihood of accessing finance for their, for their business, which, um, which uh, if you read any survey of small business owners, that's always one of the top challenges is, is access to finance. How many are we targeting to actually be able to benefit from this? We're training um, about, I'd say about 40 business advisors at the moment um, to be able to offer this service. 
Um, and the training is happening as we speak. So we've got, um, we've got training going on in Mbeya today. We were in Aringa last week. We'll be in Zanzibar later this week. Um, so we're, we're training those business advisors currently on a, on a stepwise process to, to work with a small business to get them to a point that they have all their documentation together, they've prepared their business plans, they've developed their financial statements, and they've really done a thorough um, cash flow projection on, on, on the project that they're looking to finance. So we anticipate being able that this service will go live in January of 2018. But um, it, again, it will be an incumbent on us and the BDS providers that we've trained to really start getting the word out so that people can be aware of it and that they can start signing up and, and registering for the service. What does the monitoring process involve? The, the business advisors will be trained on a series of different elements of, of credit readiness. And each of those steps will have its own uh, minimum, minimum standards. So when they're developing a business plan, they're trained on, the, on, on, a, on a particular type of business plan that makes sure that it has certain elements within it. That the financial statements are, um, they're trained in a very specific way on, on the developing of, of, in preparation of the financial statements. So that, um, so that there's a, a certain level of, of uniformity across all of the providers of the service. So that, um, so that um, any small business owner that engages in that service can have a relative level of confidence in, in the quality of the service that they're receiving. That said, there's still going to be a, a, a rating service on the BizFundi platform, so they can always go back and rate their, their experience uh, with working with the business advisor. So the business advisor will always have that added incentive of making sure that they, they perform well so that they can have um, opportunities for new business. How are we engaging the private sector? We're looking at big businesses uh, to be able to support the development, particularly of small entrepreneurs, through this program. We don't have any partnerships uh, with large business, businesses ex specifically, but we are, uh, we're a very collaborative program and we like to work with as many other partners as we can. So we have um, we have a formal partnership with the Tanzania Private Sector Foundation, uh, so we feature their MSME information uh, portal on our site, and they have a link to our BizFundi platform on their site. Um, we have um, engaged in, in countless efforts uh, with other organizations um, to explore areas for, for partnering, um, and a lot of those are, are, are in the near stages of, of, of completion at the moment. So I, I don't want to talk specifically about too many of them. But um, it, it's a key part of our approach is partnering. Um, because we realize that there are a lot of other organizations here in Tanzania that are doing great work and have been here for a long time. And we're not competing with them and we're not trying to replicate any mistakes that have already been made by somebody else. What we want to do is we want to leverage the existing resources uh, as best as we can. And, and one of the ways that that partnership is most important to us is